During his lifetime, Victor Serge, pseudonym for Victor Livovich Kibalchik, 1890-1947, was admired or persecuted, both as a French novelist and as a Russian revolutionary, as distinct from many Western writers and intellectuals, for example, Kostler, Malraux, Orwell or Salone, who flirted at one time or another with revolution. Serge was a revolutionary and an internationalist more or less from birth, and remained one to his death. The stateless son of exiled anti-Tsarist Russian Paris wandering Europe forever in search of good libraries and cheap lodgings. Serge was born, by chance, in Brussels, Belgium, homeschooled by these penniless, idealistic, exiled scholars. Young Victor imbibed the heady traditions of the Russian revolutionary intelligentsia while growing up poor on the streets of Brussels. So poor that at age 11 he watched horrified as his younger brother died of malnutrition while he survived on the pilfered sugar soaked in coffee that little Raoul refused to eat. Throughout the rest of my life, he recalled, it has been my fate always to find in the undernourished urchins of the squares of Paris, Berlin, and Moscow the same condemned faces of my tribe. At age 14, Victor is a militant socialist young guard. At 15, a member of a rebel gang of Brussels apprentices writing and printing their own radical anarchist sheet, The Rebel. At 18, he is starving in Paris, devouring the contents of the saint Genevieve library while editing L'Anarchy, lecturing on anarcho-individualism, giving Russian lessons, and translating Russian novels to survive. At 21, Serge is sentenced to five years in a French penitentiary for refusing to rat on his anarchist brothers from Brussels who, unwilling to be masters or slaves, became bandits. The first ever to use automobiles to attack banks, the police had only bikes. Known as the Tragic Bandits, most of them die in shootouts with the Paris police or on the guillotine. Released from prison in 1917, Victor is expelled from France and comes back to life in Barcelona, where he works as a printer, participates in a revolutionary workers' uprising, and publishes his first article signed Victor Serge, the title, The Fall of a Tsar. Soon Serge is attempting to reach revolutionary Russia via Paris, where he is arrested as a Bolshevik suspect and held for more than a year in a typhus-infested camp. There he meets his first Bolshevik. Exchange for a French officer held by the Soviets, Victor arrives in St. Petersburg, then called Petrograd, later Leningrad, in January 1919. While crossing the frozen Baltic Sea in a prisoner convoy, he falls in love with Lyuba Rusakova the daughter of a Russian anarchist. Victor joins in the defense of the frozen, starving red capital, besieged by western-backed white armies. Twenty-odd years later, he will draw on this experience of Petrograd, under siege to portray the Germans' World War II siege of Leningrad in his novel Unforgiving Years. Serge is drawn to the Bolsheviks' heroic energy and participates in the creation of the Communist International. Despite misgivings about communist authoritarianism, he joins the party in May 1919 and writes favorable impressions of the Bolsheviks for the anarchist press back in France. However, by the spring of 1921, Serge's loyalties were severely torn when anarchist and dissident communist sailors rebel and seize the island fortress of Kronstadt. Serge joins in the thwarted attempt by the American anarchist Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman to mediate the conflict and then looks on in horror as the rebels and communist volunteers massacre each other in a fratricidal combat across the melting ice flows. After withdrawing briefly from politics, Serge accepts a common turn assignment in Germany, where the promise of a new revolution poses a last hope for saving the isolated Russian Soviets from smothering under increasing bureaucratic dictatorship. In Berlin, Serge serves the common turn both as a journalist and under various identities, as a militant or agent. In those days, there was little distinction. Under the signature R. Albert, he sends reports to the world communist press on galloping inflation, mass unemployment, mutilated veterans begging, strikes, and abortive putsches. Serge's familiarity with the world of secret agents and with the desperation of German people living through the post-World War I crisis 
helped him recreate the atmosphere of Berlin at the end of World War II in the third movement of the novel Unforgiving Years. In March 1923, the German communists are outlawed after the fiasco of their aborted Hamburg putsch, and Serge flees with his family to Vienna, where he works with Georg Lukács and Antonio Gramsci. In 1925, despairing of a renewal of revolution in the West, Serge makes the insanely idealistic decision to return to Russia and join in the last-ditch fight against Stalin as a member of the doomed left opposition led by Trotsky. Expelled from the party in 1928, Serge turns to writing. In quick succession, he produces three novels in a well-documented history, year one of the Russian Revolution, and publishes them in Paris before being arrested and deported to the Ural in 1933. In a letter smuggled out of Russia for publication in case of his arrest, Serge defends democratic freedom as essential to worker socialism and describes Stalinist communism as a totalitarian nightmare. After months of interrogation in the notorious Lubyanka prison, Serge is deported to the Ural, where he is joined by his teenage son, the future artist Vladi, while Serge's wife, Luyoba, driven insane by the Stalinist terror, is confined to an asylum. Protests by French trade unionists and writers including André Gide and Romain Roland, lead to the release of Serge and his family from Russia in 1936, but the two novels he completed in captivity are seized by the GPU at the Polish border. From precarious exile in Brussels and Paris, Serge struggles to support his insane wife and their two children while turning out books and articles furiously to unmask the big lie of the Moscow show trials and Stalin's murderous intrigues in Republican Spain. His scrupulously documented eyewitness books and articles are greeted with silence by complacent intellectuals hypnotized by the anti-fascism of communist-manipulated popular fronts. Serge is obliged to fall back on his old prison trade of proofreader and find work in the print shops of socialist papers that boycott his articles. Meanwhile, Serge and his comrades are living in a labyrinth of pure madness as Stalin's agents kidnap and murder Trotsky's supporters in the middle of opulent, indifferent Paris. The first section of Unforgiving Years, The Secret Agent, is Serge's eerie evocation of a doomed world capital paralyzed before the looming threats of war. The character of Serge's secret agent, known as D, or Sasha, reflects Serge's common turn experiences and his personal acquaintance with three important agents who defected during the 1930s. Serge was distantly related to the Soviet diplomat Alexander Barmin, who is one who survived Serge Ghost Wrote in Paris. Serge thought of Barmin, who died in 1988 in Darien, Connecticut, as a perfect Soviet young American. A more likely model for Sasha slash D was Ignacy Reese, a secret agent whose break with Stalin's Communist Party was motivated by sincere revolutionary internationalism and Trotskyist sympathies. Reese was murdered in Switzerland on his way to a clandestine meeting with Serge, having made two fatal mistakes which Serge will attribute to D. Reese mailed his letter of resignation before making his break, and he confided his intentions to a trusted colleague. However, Sasha slash D's character owes more to Walter Kravitsky, former head of Stalin's Secret Service, whom Serge had known in Russia and with whom he had several rather tense meetings in Paris after his defection. Kravitsky could never quite believe that Serge had been released from the Gulag as a result of a protest campaign and suspected him of being a double agent. During one walk down a dark street, each time Kravitsky put his hand in his breast pocket, Serge did likewise. Yet, according to a note in Serge's FBI file, Serge was deeply affected by Kravitsky's mysterious death in a Washington, D.C. hotel room in 1941, about which Serge wrote, There had been some fine moments in his life. He had been courageous and devoted. Now in his soul, he was a defeated man. These types of struggles are so out of proportion to any man's powers, and to one who was misled during the decisive years of his life, that it didn't astonish me. Rare are those who know how to resist demoralization and defeat. Perhaps Serge injected something of his own undefeated soul into his fictional Sasha D, who does manage to resist demoralization. By 1939, Serge is on the verge of recognition with Midnight in the Century, his novel about 
about deported oppositionist, which was nominated for the Prix Goncourt. At the outbreak of the war, however, his books, considered subversive, are withdrawn from publication. When Paris falls to the Nazis, Serge, penniless, joins the exodus on foot, accompanied by his young companion, Laurette Sejourné, and his son, Vladi. They survive a Luftwaffe strafing attack on the Loire and eventually find refuge in a Marseille villa rented by Varian Fry of the American Refuge Committee and shared with André Breton and his family. Aided by Dwight MacDonald in New York and by exiled comrades of the Spanish POUM who had settled in Mexico, Serge and Vladi boarded the last refugee ship out of Vichy, France and end up in Mexico City in 1941 a year after Trotsky's assassination. Here, Serge finds himself politically isolated, cut off from Europe by the war, unable to publish, boycotted, slandered, and physically attacked by Stalinist agents. Nonetheless, it is in Mexico that Serge completes his most enduring works, Memoirs of a Revolutionary, The Case of Comrade Tuliev, and Unforgiving Years. He also studies psychoanalysis, writes a manuscript on pre-Columbian archaeology, and meditates on consciousness and death. He explores the meaning of the war not only in theoretical and political theses, but also in terms of dreams, earthquakes, volcanoes, and luxuriant vegetation. All these elements come together in Unforgiving Years, which he finishes in 1946. In 1947, his heart gives out, stressed by the altitude and exhaustion exhausted by years of prison and privation. Penniless and stateless as usual, Serge is buried in a pauper's grave and registered as a Spanish Republican. His posthumously published Memoirs of a Revolutionary concludes as follows. Of this hard childhood, this troubled adolescence, all those terrible years, I regret nothing as far as I am myself concerned. Any regret I have is for energies wasted and struggles which were bound to be fruitless. These struggles have taught me that in any man the best and the worst live side by side and sometimes mingle, and that what is worse comes through the corruption of what is best. Those who know how to resist demoralization and defeat. Perhaps Serge injected something of his own undefeated soul into his fictional Sasha D, who does manage to resist demoralization. By 1939, Serge is on the verge of recognition with Midnight in the Century. His novel about deported oppositionists, which was nominated for the Prix Goncourt. At the outbreak of the war, however, his books, considered subversive, are withdrawn from publication. When Paris falls to the Nazis, Serge, penniless, joins the exodus on foot, accompanied by his young companion, Laurette Sejourné, and his son, Vladi. They survive a Luftwaffe strafing attack on the Loire and eventually find refuge in a Marseille villa rented by Varian Fry of the American Refuge Committee and shared with André Breton and his family. Aided by Dwight MacDonald in New York and by exiled comrades of the Spanish POUM who had settled in Mexico, Serge and Vladi boarded the last refugee ship out of Vichy, France and end up in Mexico City in 1941 a year after Trotsky's assassination. Here, Serge finds himself politically isolated, cut off from Europe by the war, unable to publish, boycotted, slandered, and physically attacked by Stalinist agents. Nonetheless, it is in Mexico that Serge completes his most enduring works, Memoirs of a Revolutionary, The Case of Comrade Tuliev, and Unforgiving Years. He also studies psychoanalysis, writes a manuscript on pre-Columbian archaeology, and meditates on consciousness and death. He explores the meaning of the war not only in theoretical and political theses, but also in terms of dreams, earthquakes, volcanoes, and luxuriant vegetation. All these elements come together in Unforgiving Years, which he finishes in 1946. In 1947, his heart gives out, stressed by the altitude and exhaustion exhausted by years of prison and privation. Penniless and stateless as usual, Serge is buried in a pauper's grave and registered as a Spanish Republican. His posthumously published Memoirs of a Revolutionary concludes as follows. Of this hard childhood, this troubled adolescence, all those terrible years, I regret nothing as far as I am myself concerned. Any regret I have is for energies wasted and struggles which were bound to be fruitless. These struggles have taught me that in any man the best and the worst live side by side and sometimes mingle, and that what is worse comes through the corruption of what is best.